All right, so we're back now, and we're going to look at how to take our wheels that are now rolling. Let's check this here. See the wheels are rolling. But right now, the tread is just staying still. So the next thing that we're going to do here is we're going to learn how to actually make the tread so that the texture rotates along with the wheels. And actually, what we're going to do also is we're going to take a quick look at a way to construct this tread as well. So I'm going to take this tread. Um, <clears throat> for now, I'll just hide the layer, and we'll create a new uh, mesh item that we'll drop in here. <clears throat> we could uh, just delete that entirely, but we'll keep it there for reference since we have it. And we'll go over to our quad view so that uh, so that we can build these these tank tracks. So I'm going to select both of the mesh layers that have the wheels in them, and I'm going to switch to polygon mode. And then I'm going to select, I'm going to start at the midpoint. Actually, let's just select around this way. I'm going to go to a side view there. So I'll select around you know, about to halfway around the tire, or the, excuse me, the wheel. I'll do the same thing around oops, this side. And we'll do the same thing on the back here. So we'll get from the middle around to the bottom, same thing along the top, <clears throat> and get that around to the bottom. Now, this might go over the top of the wheel just a little bit, but that will actually be okay uh, because when they attach together here, it's going to get the pull of the subdivision surfaces on them anyway, so they will, uh, will straighten that out. So I'm going to copy that, move to my empty mesh layer, and paste that in. And then I'm going to start bridging these two. So I'm going to take these two edges here and these two here. And then I'm going to run the bridge tool. So we'll go to Edge, Bridge, and I'm going to click. And initially, that's going to come in here. And this will work fine, except uh, for the fact that this is uh, a little stretched. <coughs> Excuse me. So we, um, we'll probably want to get a, a little bit more geometry in there so that we can even this out. Now. Um, we can lay out our UVs uh, to take advantage of um, any stretch geometry here, but I'm going to give it just a little bit more polygons to work with so that, uh, so that we have a little bit easier time. I'm going to set my mode to linear and my segments up. I'm actually going to try and get them pretty close to the same. So I'm going to set them to about 12 is a little small. And this also will help later if, uh, if you decide to do any physical modeling along the treads. So I'm going to try to kind of think forward a little bit with what you're working on so that you don't have to go back and rebuild just because you, uh, you, you switch your idea or decide to kind of upgrade the work you've done a little bit. So again, bridge, I already have uh, 16 segments set, so that's fine. And we'll grab this and flip it so it's facing in. <clears throat> and then I'll run polygon thicken. And I'll pull it out. Looks like the whole thing is rotated very slightly. Uh, the back wheel is a little bit higher than the bottom, or excuse me, than the front wheel, but we can adjust that uh, with the entire thing here once we've got it finished. So let's just pull it down. I'm going to make the treads a little bit thicker than where they would go to the ground plane, uh, just to give us a little bit more to work with. Okay. Now, the one problem we are having is that this is uh, a bit narrow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop select these two sides. And I'm just going to run bevel, make sure that I have group polygons on. And pull those out. Try to go to the edge of the wheels. And I'm going to bevel them, pull them in just a little bit. And then I'm going to uh, I'm going to bevel again here just to kind of solidify these. And just pull that in so they get a little bit of roundness still to them. So there you go. We have the uh, the general geometry created for the tracks. So now we need to create a UV that will allow us to uh, work with this and be able to put a tread texture on there. So <clears throat> let's move over to our UV layout. You can see I've selected this um, inner center uh, edge that's running around here. I'm going to go to UV maps and we're going to choose a new map. We'll call this tread. I might already have a tread on there, so I'll call it tread two. And then I'm going to run the UV peeler and click in the viewport. You can see pretty quickly that has um, that's given me a nice unwrap of these. Now, 
Um, you can see the minimum and the maximum. That is how much of the UV space you want this to be able to take up. So if you know you are going to use half of this UV space for something else, for example, then uh, then you may want to only go to you know U of 0.5 or V of 0.5. Now, and uniformity, this is going to be, if you look, some of these are smaller than others, and this is kind of accurate as to the size of the polygons on there. So this is what we want here. Um, you can pull this up to like 100% and everything will get uniform, um, all evenly spaced, but since we're not evenly spaced there, we don't really want that. So now if we look, we've got our center tracks running right down the middle, our inner tracks running down the sides, and this is a better place for us to have the seam here, so that's good too. And then we have our edges running along here and here. So everything's pretty nicely laid out. And this is going to be a good UV for us to use uh, to put textures on here. So let's grab this, assign a material. Again, I'll call it Tread 2 because, like I said, I think I have a Tread material already on there. We'll apply that. And now we're going to go over here and, <clears throat> and grab our, our material. So let's go to my desktop. I'll go to the tread folder. All right, so I've got these. These are actually from the total textures uh, cre um, collection. The, uh, the I think it's volume seven, and I'm going to take this uh, diffuse bump and specular map. I'm going to use all three of those and just drop them in here. So we'll go over to the shader tree, open up um, render, we'll open up tread two, and then I'm going to grab all three of those and just drag them on into that. Give it a second to update. And you can see they've gone in, but uh, we've got some issues with how these are actually tiling. So I'm going to take all of these so that I can edit them together. And in the properties, I'm going to go to the, the texture locator. And along the U, I want this to repeat twice. So the horizontal repeat will put up to two. That's going to make these come in, and that we will have a set of treads. Uh, tracks on the outside and on the inside. And then on the uh, vertical wrap, we'll just need to adjust this until they're either not stretched or they're the size that we want them to be. So I think I'm going to go up to maybe 10. I think that looks pretty nice, actually. So we'll go with that. All right. And now we just need to assign these to their respective layers. So S, we'll put to the specular amount. And then we'll take our bump. And this, oops. Our bump and assign it to bump. And we're left with our diffuse color. Now, just to keep um, OpenGL happy, I'm going to take the diffuse and pull it up to the top. I just find that it tends to redraw itself a little easier if it's got the diffuse on top. And there we go. So now we have our treads, but <clears throat> now we want to actually go in and animate them. So just how we linked up the wheels to the movement of, um, of a locator, we're going to link up the UV movement or the movement of the texture locator actually. And let's get all of these here actually as a little bit of a setup. And we'll go to te we'll go to uh, texture layers and we want to point these all to the same locator. So I'm going to point these all at the um, hose the texture image hose 2. So now if I look they're all well, they should be. Let's set them all here to uh, to the same locator. Mm, well. Where did it go? Hmm. <clears throat> Let's see here. Looks like I lost them. So <laughs> let's uh, let's make sure that I can get these on here. So um, I'll do this. I'll just make a new locator. Occasionally you get something like this happen. Um, comes out a little different than the last time you did it, but it's good to know how to adjust to these. So I'm going to take this locator too, and I'm going to call this tread. Um, tread locator <clears throat> and now we're going to go here each of these we're going to point to the tread locator except of course it's not letting me do that I think I made a mistake by setting them all to something else so I'm going to set them to none here at the moment and we'll fix that Sorry about that. Um, I clicked new locator and I meant to do new texture locator. So I deleted the locator and I put in a tread locator here that's actually a texture locator now. That's uh, handy. And 
So now I'll take all of these and I'll assign them to tread locator. So now as that locator moves, um, they'll move with it. Okay, the only thing is now I'm going to actually have to go in and adjust uh, the texture locator so that these work again. So I'm going to set it to UV map. Um, the UV map, I'm going to choose tread 2. I'm going to reset this to 2 and 10, just like I had it before. And now we're ready to go again. Okay, so one thing we'll notice, if I take this locator and I move it, nothing happens right now. And that's good because we want to actually hook this up so that... Um, so that as we move this, which we'll put up here with our uh, tread locator, so that our UV will actually move here. So let's, uh, let's have a look at how to do that. We're going to go up to our Animate tab, and we're going to open up our channel links. <clears throat> and what we want is we want the texture locator to be the driven. And if we look down here, you can see these matrix two offsets. Um, so you can offset the U or the V. Let's check here. I think ours is the V, if I remember correctly. Yep, this is the vertical. So back over to animate. So we want the matrix um, V, this one here, uh, to be driven by <clears throat> the movement of this locator here. So this locator that's also moving our treads. So we need to take our locator load it as the driver and we already have our um, our tread locator as the um, as the driven so we'll choose the uh, world position <clears throat> and we'll link that out to the um, matrix V or the matrix 1 2 offset V Oops. Or the, the position X, sorry, and um, and we can't do a direct link, and I'll show you why. If we add a direct link, let's click over to our render preview here, because we'll have to see this in render preview. Um, it's not going to link up correctly, because it's moving along, and here, let's turn off our uh, global illumination just for a second so we can get a quicker redraw. We'll turn that off. And of course now we can't see. Uh, let's go over here to this side. Let's make sure our light's on. There we go. All right, so now we can actually see the tread again. <clears throat> but if we move this forward with that direct link, it's moving much, much too slow. So what we actually have to do is create a relationship. So let's back up here. Back up before we made that link. All right, so we want to take the um, <coughs> the X position, and we want to link that again up to the to the um, matrix one two V offset. And we have to set a relationship. Now this is going to require a little bit of math, unfortunately, but um, but we need to know how far around this um, this tread is, so that we know um, how far it has to roll to get it to move the proper amount, okay? So, because this uh, offset has to do with how many times the uh, the texture is moving along the V in the UV space. So, we're gonna go here. I won't bore you with doing the, the measurements. So I'll go in here and measure. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to measure um, this space. Let's go over to our quad view so we can speed this up. Um, I'm gonna measure this space and then that will be times two. And then I'm going to get the circumference of this space because we have half of it here and half of it over there. I'm gonna add that all together and we'll come back here in a second. And uh, yours obviously will be different if you've set this up differently, if you have a different size scale, but uh, you'll need to get all the distance here. So get out your calculator and, uh, and we'll figure that out. Remember to use the, uh, the dimensions tool, just a, uh, a tip here. So if I were to take this and go uh, view and dimensions tool. It's going to give me the actual the actual scale of the section I have selected. So <clears throat> you can use that to uh, to get your own dimensions. If you're on an angle, remember you're going to have to do um, the the rise over the run. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Uh, remember your Pythagorean theorem. Yes, geometry has come back to haunt you. So 
get your own measurements, and when we come back, we'll find out how to plug those in. All right, so i um, gone through and done my math, and I've discovered that uh, each um, rotation uh, of the V and the UV is uh, worth uh, 0.54688 meters, so over 500 uh, millimeters for each rotation. So we'll need to set up that um, <clears throat> when the locator has moved 0.54688 meters that we have had this rotate uh, one UV length. So I'm going to take my X position <clears throat> and I'm going to go down and link that again to the matrix uh, UV offset or the V offset. I'm going to make that a relationship and click add link. Now when you do that you'll get this uh, you know, handy dandy uh, setup here where we can check the uh, graph. Now the graph is just going to give us kind of our current positions. So what we want to do is we'll set one of these back to just zero, kind of the default one that comes in here. We'll set this to zero and then we're going to add in another keyframe you know, just right about 500 millimeters and now we'll go in and type in our <clears throat> our values here. So I'm going to go 0.54688 meters oops, equals, um, actually I know this is negative one because I did it once and uh, set it one, it was rolling backwards. So we'll set that to negative one and let's make sure all our numbers are correct here. Yep, five, four, six, eight, eight, good. So now what we'll do is we'll set, uh, excuse me, set our pre-behavior to linear. So it's gonna come in that way. We'll also set our post behavior to linear. That way it won't matter how far we drag this, our tread rotation is going to work. And with that, we are we're all set up. So we'll go over to the render tab here and we'll just get a little bit of a preview. We'll see what this is gonna look like. So you can see if I drag this a little bit, see that the treads are indeed rotating. And then the giveaway, the one thing that you wanna check on and uh, this is how you'll check your math, is you want to look and see that the treads on the bottom side are for the most part staying still while the tracks roll. That's how treads work. The, uh, the part that are on the ground stays still and the wheels roll over them and cause the tread to rotate around over the top. So that's how they get traction. So that looks like those are staying pretty much in place. Uh, we are set and ready to go. Now if we want we can adjust our <clears throat> our locator here. Let's rotate it just a little bit so that it's a little bit more flush with the ground. We'll move it up there and then we'll set our, our action center to automatic and now we are ready to go ahead and animate this guy. As we move it the wheels are obviously rolling but also now the UV texture for the treads is linked up. Remember that you did have to uh, set all of your uh, images that you're using, bump, specular, diffuse, whatever they might be, to the same locator. And you can either choose an existing locator or I find it easier to just create a new, uh, a new texture locator. And then you're set up and ready to go. You can roll this thing all over the place and it's just going to keep up with you. Hope that helps. See you in the next video.